What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm excited to announce Chaos Detonator, our exciting new update for the Chaos Explosion and Destruction add-on for Blender 3D. The Chaos add-on has been around for over five years now, and while the old version was still useful for creating those particle explosions, we thought it was time for a significant update in the functionality and user-friendliness of the add-on in order to make your explosion process even more fun inside a Blender. Now, one of the main aspects of Chaos that we wanted to improve on was creating a way to visualize what the explosion was going to look like before the simulation is actually baked. Now in the old version of Chaos, we used particles to create the fuel in the explosion, but in this new version of Chaos Detonator, we actually have custom emitters that allow for a much better visual representation of what your explosion is going to look like before you actually simulate it. All right guys, so here we are on the Blender Market page for the Chaos add-on. And if we scroll down here, you'll very quickly see what these emitters inside of Chaos Detonators are going to allow you to do. You can see here what the visual representation of your explosion is going to look like. We have a variety of different empties here, as well as mesh systems that you can control the speed of and therefore have a lot more artistic control over what your explosion is going to look like. And then of course, in your simulation process, as far as baking your domain goes, you can of course experiment with the fluid parameters as well in order to get your desired result. Now, one more thing I should mention before I show you guys the very simple installation process is that we still have the original version of Chaos included in your download section on Blender Market. So you can have access to all the different debris fields within the original Chaos in order to enhance your explosions further. So you will have access to that. And we do plan on bringing over a lot of the functionality in the old version of Chaos into the new version to improve it even further. But as of right now, the best way to get the best results from Chaos and to streamline your entire explosion creation process in order to get aspects of the old version called Chaos Legacy, in addition to the new Chaos Detonator, would be to install both of these files separately, and then you have access to both systems in order to streamline your whole process. So anyways, guys, let's install the two versions of the add-on and open them up inside of Blender, and then I'll also show a short demo on how we can create a very simple explosion in the end of this video as well. So when you buy the add-on, you may be a little bit confused as we have a lot of different versions of Chaos in your download section. And the reason we have all of these different files is because some people are using older versions of Blender and we want to make sure that it's available for people using older versions of Blender as well. However, if you're using the latest version of Blender, you only need to concern yourself with two install files. And those are these two at the top here. So that'll be Chaos Legacy 4.1 and Chaos Detonator Install 4.1. So you're going to want to download those two files and you don't need to unzip them or anything as we're just going to install them directly inside of Blender. So I'll go ahead and open up Blender here. And in order to install Chaos Detonator as well as Chaos Legacy, we'll go to Edit, Preferences, and navigate to your Add-ons tab if it's not selected yet, and then we'll go to Install, and then just navigate to where you have saved your Chaos files. And you can see I have the two files right here. First, I'll install the Legacy version, click it and install, and it should pop up here, but if it doesn't, you can search for it in the search bar. And then we'll just select the checkbox here in order to enable it. And now once again, I'll click on install and we'll click on chaos detonator this time and install this one. And it should pop up here as well. And there we go. Let's go ahead and select it and close our window here. And just like that, they should be installed. If you go to the right window here, you can see we have our Chaos Detonator systems here, as well as Chaos Legacy, which includes all of the old functionality, like the debris fields and our destruction tools and constraint systems at the bottom here. Now, Chaos Legacy has been around for a while, so I'll put some links on how you can utilize these systems in the description below. However, in this video, I'll go over the basics on how we can create an explosion with our new Chaos Detonator mesh explosion systems. So as you can see here, right now we have a pretty basic user interface, but uh, some things will show up once we start adding our mesh explosions. So I'll go ahead and just delete everything in our scene so we can kind of start from a blank slate here. Now, all we have to do to add an explosion emitter is click on the add mesh explosion button here. And as you can see, right off the bat, we have an explosion controller come up here. And you can see here, we have a little panel that we can control the spike count where this is kind of, you know, where the explosion is going to emit from. So we have a variety of different parameters we can control here right off the bat. We can control the emitter angle. So kind of bring them outward, like it's gonna be some kind of dust wave. We can change the circle randomness. So add some randomness around where these emitters are going to blast out of. Then we also have a random size, which is one of my favorites, where we can actually uh, kind of control how far each mesh is going to emit fire and smoke. So I'll kind of leave that at about 50%. And then finally we have radius right here, where we can control how far the uh, starting point of each emitter 
emitter is. So that's kind of the basic setup here. Of course, we can change all of these once we uh, press enter here as well. I'll just uh, kind of bring this up here. Also, we have angle randomness. I don't think I covered that one. Um, I actually like to bring emitter angle down to zero and then bring up angle randomness. And you can actually create a much more random explosion by increasing this parameter. So uh, this one is more uniform. As you can see, if we crank this emitter angle up, it'll go all the way down to more of a perpendicular kind of explosion along the ground here. But then angle randomness is going to increase some more random values in there. And uh, you know, once you play around with it, you'll get the hang of it. But I like to kind of play around with the emitter angle as well as the angle randomness. And once you're happy with it, you can click off that panel and then you can select the controller here. And then once we select that controller here, we have all of those settings plus a few more on our chaos panel here. So you can see I can still adjust the explosion count, the emitter angle, the angle randomness. Uh, I can change the radius once again. I can also change the size. I can change all that good stuff. And then I also can change some of these settings here, which we'll get to in a second. And a lot of these I'll cover in future videos when I show how you can create specific explosions with this add-on. But uh, one of the biggest ones you do need to animate is the emission value here. And this emission parameter, uh, you can see if we kind of bring it from zero to two, it actually animates our explosion mesh and that's the value that you're going to want to animate over several frames in order to create your explosion and as you can see here if we just put it at around one we'll get kind of the general shape of our explosion and that's where you can start adjusting some of these values down here so gauge is one of my favorites here you can actually bring this down and create kind of a more skinny emitter so if you want to make some kind of smoke trails this is definitely how you could do that and now we have a much kind of skinnier looking emitter and the other two here we can actually change the strength of the noise that's on this mesh emitter so you can see actually increase the emitter gauge a little bit to show you kind of the effect of this displacement strength you can actually just either bring it down to zero for a more cleaner look or you can increase this slowly and get something a little bit more chaotic. So I like to leave it around one most of the time. Um, and then you can also change the scale and create a different shape for this emitter as well. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it at its default. The default one should be pretty good. And finally, these last two here are the um, fluid velocity and fuel amount. Now, fluid velocity is going to change how much the smoke takes on the speed of your emitter. I like to actually bring this down to something like 0.05. One or two will give you a more violent explosion. But if your emitter is moving fast, enough it should make a pretty good looking result and again i'll cover these parameters a little bit more in the future but uh, finally we have the fuel amount here which of course just controls the amount of fuel being emitted from the mesh emitter here okay so how do we create a simple explosion using these parameters well once you've done your first step here and kind of created the general shape of your explosion with these different values on your emitter now it's time to actually animate the emission value i'll go to frame 10 here on our timeline and I'll bring our emission down to zero. I'll hold my cursor over the emission parameter and press I to add a keyframe. And then I'll go over maybe five frames, maybe six frames. So I'll go to frame 16. Then I'll bring our emission up to two. And then I'll press I again. And now, as you can see here, we have this kind of explosion system here. And again, one of the reasons we created this system was so you could visualize kind of the speed of your explosion in a much more intuitive way. So you can kind of see, especially if you play it back in real time, how your explosion is going to look. And of course, you know, adjust other parameters as well. You know, if we want to increase the gauge or whatever, you can change a lot of different things here. So we'll leave it uh, like this. I might just uh, bring up the emitter angle a tiny bit here, maybe make it a little bit more directional upward. And we'll also create a dust wave for this explosion as well. So I'll just add another mesh emitter here, click there, and let's just make sure we have the right one selected here. Okay, so explosion controller three is our new one. And you can actually select your explosions through this uh, panel here. So you can select each system. So that'll be the first one that we've just created. And then this one right here will be the one we just added. So we'll go ahead and select that one. And I might just scale it down a little bit. So it's a slightly different position for the emitter so we can select it a bit better. And I'll just bring down the emitter angle so it's kind of a dust wave. And uh, I think this should be pretty good. I might increase the explosion count, maybe uh, bring down the explosion size randomness a bit, we'll create kind of a small dust wave. I might change the circular randomness a bit because we want to try to get some smoke coming out this way. So I'll just kind of play with the circular randomness here. There we go. Something like this should be pretty good. Bring up the emission for a second. Let's see what we're getting. So something like this is uh, looking pretty nice. That might be a lot of fuel though, since we have a lot of mesh. So I might just bring down the fuel amount to 0.3. 
just so there's less and then we'll also bring down the fluid velocity to 0.5 so the dust wave will move a little bit faster but uh, yeah this is a pretty nice general shape of our explosion I can then animate this second explosion controller so I'll go to frame 10, I'll bring down the emission to zero, press I while our cursor is over the emission parameter, go up once again six frames, bring up emission to two, press I again, and now we have a basic explosion emitter that we can customize depending on how our simulation looks. Now I might just drag our keyframes over a little bit so our dust wave is a little bit later than our main blast, so it's a little bit more interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, that should be pretty good for our explosion emitter system. And of course you can add as many of these emitter systems as you'd like to create the general shape of your explosion. And you can have multiple domains to create fire and dust and smoke and different colors of blasts, for example. And that's one of the best ways you can actually get a more realistic looking explosion simulation. But I won't cover that in this video. But um, this is a pretty simple and basic explosion system that we have created fairly quickly here. And now let's add our domain so we can bake it and see how it looks. So I'll scroll down here and we'll go to import chaos domain, add that into the scene. And now you can see we have a domain cube where we will simulate our smoke inside. And we want this just big enough to contain our smoke, something like this. That should be just about right. And we'll go to our physics properties tab and we can change a variety of these settings in order to get our smoke and fire to look different ways. But the default settings that we have in our chaos domain should get you started fairly nicely here. Now I've covered this in previous videos, but there are two main parameters that you wanna to adjust to really affect how your emitter looks inside your domain cube. And that is the resolution divisions right here as well as the noise uprest factor. So pretty much how this works is resolution divisions controls the number of voxels within your domain cube. In other words, kind of the resolution of the smoke. So you can play around with this number in order to get different general shapes of smoke. And once you get a general shape of simulation that you like with these resolution divisions here, then you can upres it with the noise uprest factor. So before we bake this data, I'll just go to file and save as, and we'll save our project. I'll call it quick start explosion, save it. Then I'll scroll down here and we want to choose where we want to save our smoke simulation data. So I'll go ahead and add that here. We'll uh, create a new file. We'll call this tutorial cache. Okay. And we'll accept. And we want to simulate from frame one to 100. And yeah, this should be pretty good. We'll go ahead and simulate with a resolution divisions of 96, just for the sake of this tutorial. And before we bake our simulation, I do want to select adaptive domain for a little faster bake. And I'll just bring the threshold down to zero. And now if we click on bake data, we can give Blender a little bit of time to simulate our original explosion base mesh. All right, and just like that, we have created a basic explosion simulation. Now again, you can change the resolution divisions to change the voxel count in this cube. So of course you can free the data and then rebake it at a different resolution divisions. But for the sake of this tutorial, not going too long, I will just bake some high resolution noise on top of this original explosion base mesh because it's looking pretty cool here. You can play it back and see how it looks. So pretty basic simulation. There are a lot of things we could do. We could add some, you know, more emitters with those really skinny tracer rounds coming out here. Here, but again, I'll make a lot of tutorials on the specific types of explosions, but this is uh, good for this kind of intro video. So I'll scroll down here. Let's bake the high resolution noise on top of this base mesh. So I'll just go here and I'll select the noise checkbox and your original base mesh will disappear. I'm going to up res this guy by maybe three to kind of show you what the high resolution noise does. And you can also play around with the scale factor to get smaller scale noise or larger scale, uh, like cut up your smoke in other ways. But uh, I found the default settings here on our chaos domain that's been imported into your scene works pretty well. So go ahead and just click bake noise. And once again, give Blender some time to bake that noise on top of your original explosion base mesh. And let's see what we get. All right, and just like that, we have up our smoke simulation. As you can see, I've added a light here to the left side. I'll go ahead and duplicate this so we can shade this really quickly. But this is the general concept here, guys. You can obviously uh, play around with different settings within your domain cube, as well as adding different emitters to your scene. If we're gonna render this out, I also like to increase the light paths, at least have one volume bounce, ideally two. It just kind of depends on your computer processing speed. I'm still on a pretty old MacBook, so I'm a little bit slower today, but um, 
yeah, pretty nice looking simulation. Let's go to our shading tab real quick. I am using uh, Cycles Rendering Engine. Select our Chaos Domain, and you can see we have our fire shader built into the add-on, so it'll automatically be imported into your scene as a smoke material. So here we have our explosion simulation here. You know, it's not perfect, but for such a simple setup, two emitters, it's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring down our smoke density so we can try to see a little bit of flames in our simulation. So bring this down to maybe 20 on the density. You see now we're getting a much more fluffy looking simulation. I don't think there are any flames left at this point of our timeline. So I'll just go back a few frames to where we start seeing our flames. So we have the starting point of our simulation. So at this point of your blast, you're gonna wanna add glow and glare and everything. But actually, you know, the actual resolution of the fire is looking pretty good. When you add some glow to it, it'll look pretty awesome. We'll go to a point here where we have some smoke mixed in with our fire. And then I'll just increase the flame's brightness a bit to 10. And look at that, that's you know that's not a bad looking explosion simulation. If we render this out and added some glow to the highlights or to the emission paths, uh, this is actually pretty nice for just two emitters and for doing that so quickly without a lot of experimentation. We can increase our flame's brightness a bit to 15, give it a little bit more of a brighter look. We can also play around with this slider here to make the fire disappear within the smoke a bit more. Now this all kind of depends on the look you're going for here, guys. You can change the color of your smoke to something brighter or make it really dark too. So if you're going for like a gasoline style explosion, this can actually look really nice. If we go in here, let's see how the resolution looks. You know, we could up res it a little bit more, but it's a pretty nice looking uh, simulation for such a quick result. If you want to see how your simulation looks in real time, what you can do is just find a frame here that you like, maybe right here, and you can actually do like a 70% render here, just in viewport mode. You can go to view, viewport render animation, and Blender will go through all of your frames, and then once it's gone through all of your frames in preview mode, you can actually play it back in real time. And then you can close that window, and if you just go to view animation, you can actually see it play back in real time here. So actually, you know, not a bad looking simulation right off the bat. You can see we have actually some pretty uh, nice looking detail from that up res. You can see it's getting pretty fluffy. So we didn't use any turbulence this time, didn't add any force fields or anything, but pretty nice result from just two emitters right out of the box. Again, 96 grid resolution at three up res. Didn't take that long to make this. I did this whole tutorial in about 30 minutes. So pretty nice, you know, explosion here. Of course, at this point, you're free to render this out, add this into your scene, composite this into live action footage, or even go into Chaos Legacy, add some dirt or concrete debris into your scene. I have lots of tutorials on that, but that's the general idea here, guys. That's how you can use the new Chaos Detonator meshes in order to create explosions very quickly and visualize them as well inside a blender before you actually bake them. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys enjoy the new version of the Chaos add-on. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, whether that be specific explosion types or just general visual effects knowledge that you'd like us to share. I'll see you next time.